This is video 242, Gavin's back, updating the port side trailing outer edge jig. The ribs have to be secured in a different way, from the top and not the side. We made, we made these plates the other week, yeah. thinking it would rivet that way. Yeah. But in actual fact now they found out, no, it's got to be held from this way. Yeah. Well, just, can you just hang on two seconds? Right, thank you, Dave. So we've got to support this bit, not that way. I see. So now we're just making some pieces to go in there. Yeah. Just like so, you, so the, the, the hole for security is going to be that That's way. it. Yeah. That's it. Good. Right, thank you. No it certainly looks a bit complicated. Uh, well, it's a bit of a do one fit it. <laughs> yeah. Right, thanks, Dennis. Right. Yeah, yeah McCarnos would be very pleased if they saw this. <laughs> Sticky's working on the French wing, fitting all the engine requirements to run and operate number one engine. With only one fuel tank operational, new priming and feed pipe had to be fitted into the leading edge of the port wing. Engine mounts go on, all right? The oh yeah, lovely. Oh, yeah, the subframe went on nice. Um, it does make uh, it better if you actually prepare yourself when you're going to fit something, like subframe, engine or something like that, where the bolts go in. Yeah is trying the bolts first because sometimes you get them picked up or um, you get a bit of corrosion on or something like that pitting or whatever then you need to clean it up um, but they because the the wing has been painted and the mounts have been painted there was just um, too much paint in the hole so I just had to clean that out so once that was cleaned out and polished um, the it's bolts so went in quite nice good um, but yeah it, the, the subframe went on all right. Hopefully, the engine will go on the same way. Good. But at the moment, we're putting in um, the fuel pipes into it, all the ancillary bits, the wiring looms, and the control rods um, yeah. have all got to go through, and the priming pipes got to go through, and the boost pipes got to go through, and that's all got to be clamped in um, inside the leading edge. And then I'm making up a priming system to go from starboard side to the port side. If you've only got the one tank. You've only got the one tank. So um, I've made I made pre-made pipes, but then I was waiting for these little collars. So them little collars sit on the end, and then you flare it so the collars are just proud of the uh, or a little bit in from the end of the pipe. Yeah. So when you flared it and then you tighten the nut up. It pushes on that collar, which then pushes on the, the flare, which is just in there. Um, so there's still plenty of work to... Uh, oh, God, yeah. I've still got two camshafts to do. Um, we're waiting for the fingers to come back on that. And then there's them two to put on uh, and set up as well. What is that for number so one engine? It's for number one and number three. So this is another... That's another pipe there. Is that bent to shape then? Um, or is it just a little bit? Yeah. A little bit, but it, because it goes in the fuse large, because we're going across the fuse large, um, some of the bends had to be not put in as it were, and yeah. some were put in slightly um, to go through the holes. Yeah. So then when it goes back in, once I've flared it, I can put it back in and then um, Clip it all so that uh, it's all nice and rigid. Ooh, this one here is a pre made bend, so that's for the port side. So when it goes in, the starboard side will go in yeah. through the fuselage first. And then once we've connected up at both ends, um, it can all be clamped in place then. And then hopefully at some point we get some fuel in the fuel tank when it goes out to do a leak test. Yeah and then we can do a priming um, system leak test as well. Make sure we've got no leaks there. I'm not sure how much, um, how many pumps we're going to have to give it 
because we're drawing the fuel in from the starboard side. Yeah, so you've got so a good travel to number one. Good travel, yeah. But the way I've worked it is hopefully that the pipe that comes out of the tank will have the weight of the fuel in it, which will then naturally come out anyway. So it will fill the lines up. And then originally I thought um, the way I'd rooted it or was going to root it, it would have been difficult then for the fuel to stay in the pipe to go to the port side. So I've redone it so that when the pipe comes out this side it's actually horizontal but it's kind of gravity fed then. and then it's slightly gravity fed yeah. yeah so when it goes the other side it's going downhill but then when it comes to number three it's then on a t-piece so the fuel will drop down onto it and then come down to the priming pump itself um, it's a complicated so, little so we track. should sh yeah so we should be all right yeah. um, the proof of the pudding is the test yeah. once we test it so once it comes to testing it will disconnect them from the um, pipes from the engines yeah. and then with the fuel in the tank and then we'll pump it and pre-prime it and then see if um, how many pumps it takes but once that line's full which it should be then you've got stay? all that will line of fuel that? anyway it so hold that until the next time will it yeah it should do yeah. days later yeah yeah, you yeah. won't get an air blockage in it. Shouldn't do. I mean, there'll be a lot of air in it initially. Yeah. But um, yeah. once it's drawn through, it should be yeah. it should be there, ready and waiting, yeah. rather than how I was going to do it before, because you could have been pumping for ages. <laughs> and we don't want to be splitting it. We're all priming one side and then waiting for the other side yeah. to then start priming because you're trying to draw the same sort of fuel yeah. um, from the same pipe all than that. Yeah. So all I've right. got this one to do, I've got that one to do and I've got another two pipes underneath to flare. <laughs> It'll keep me going. It's keep me going for a bit, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Get out. Bye, happy folks. <laughs> and here's our germ. Oh. Hello folks, Ned. Come to have a look at this wing. The lads are preparing the Lancaster for this season taxi run. Morning Brad. Morning Ned. Spanner coming your way, Christopher. Hi Joel. Good morning, Chris. Hey, you you alright? Yes, thank you. Yep. Yeah. Marvel. And the subframe went on all right, didn't it? The lads are more fitted than wheels. The outer wing stands is removed to allow the engineers to lower the Lancaster back onto the main wheels. Chris is checking the undercarriage is locked in the down position and cannot be retracted. What are you checking for, Chris? Just making sure they've got like they've got like a ground lock. Yeah. Which is this strut here. Yeah. Stops it folding up. Because they've all been out and we've done stuff on the undercarriage. Just make sure these locks are back in before we put it back on its wheels. Yeah. Takes the weight then. Just a bit of a check. Yeah. A second check, is it? I'll just put them in. Yeah, 
because they've all been out this year for various reasons, the ground lock, so before she gets on the ground, yeah. Chris is just doing an independent check. Make sure it yeah. Up with the other side? Yeah, I'm up with the other side. Mind you, I'm not Did you talk the um, wing nuts where the shackles go up 300 yeah, pounds? Well, yeah, it's not exceeding 300. Yeah, they've all been tightened up yeah. and locked, so they're all good. Web plates are all done, so that's all locked off. Yeah, so get her on the floor. Yeah. And then carry on with yeah. our bits and bobs. Aidy's doing all right with the turret up front, so the front turret. Hades managed to fix the gun mounting oh, and the yeah. locking, there's like yeah. a locking ring on it, he's managed to sort that, so yeah. hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get that, we'll get that fitted. Good. Do you want to do a brake check while she's in the air, because all the brakes have been apart? Yeah, we can do, can't we? It'd be even better, actually, once it's up, yeah, definitely. Definitely. <coughs> yeah, it's coming on. Yep. Rip. Yeah. Rear fuselage former 35. Dave has now fitted all parts of the structure, but they're only held on with skin pins. So it's ready now for cleaning up and painting, got, is it? Um, just a few more holes to get through here. Down the bottom here, just put them through. And the ones through here, and then, yeah, second part. Deburr it, clean it up, paint. So you get it in and get the other one out? Yes, yeah. Get the other one. Finished, and what did it take you about a week to do it? Two weeks? A couple of weeks, probably. Yeah. yeah. But then we've still got this end bit to do that for the last week. Oh. John's helping with the jig fittings. Brad's checking the brake system. Questions from Ed in the comment section about the Browning 0 0.5 of an inch gun. How much ammunition are in the boxes for this half inch ammunition on the Lancaster Great I don't know. I thought it was about 2,600. It's a lot, isn't it? I thought, I thought, so you, you uh, knew? Yeah. Uh, I thought it was a couple of thousand. Three, 300 in the track yeah. and then a couple of thousand in the, in the tanks. Um, it's not I can't really think so. I can have a look in the air. I'll look in the book. Yeah. Put me in the book. Oh, right. Hang on. I'll yeah. find you an answer. We'll look in the relevant publication. And how long a burst would it be on the guns before they started getting hot and distorted? And like if, it, if somebody pressed it for 15 seconds, would it take 15 seconds? 
You shouldn't fire for 15 seconds. No. Um, that I'd have to look up. I've, yeah. I've seen that figure somewhere. Yeah. And um, also... They'll keep going, but you knack at the barrel. That's like, what I mean. It, it damages yeah. the barrel. I mean, yeah. it doesn't stop it firing, but it does damage the barrel. Yeah. yeah um, but I can't remember it. I, I, in my mind, certainly for the 303, it was, I think it was burst for three to five seconds. Yeah. Because what they, what they, what they said in one of the gunnery books I was reading is don't hose pipe. So if you're missing, don't keep the guns going until you oh, until hit. Yeah. Actually stop and move it and then start again. Yeah. So and how many rounds did you say it fired in a minute? Oh, what? The Browning 303 fired 1,150 yeah. a minute, rounds per minute. 1,150? The 303, 1,150. And what about the point I five? think the 50 cal was six or 700, six in my mind. Yeah. That's just so, it's a, I can show you on the, uh, on the book, you want. So each, each ammo box holds approximately 1,000 rounds of ammunition, so 2,000 in total, and each duck, 350 rounds. Each, yeah. Each duct. So altogether, 2,700. In one box? In two, split across two boxes, so on both oh. sides, 2,700. Both sides, yeah. so 1,350 each side. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. thank you. Yeah. They have now lowered the Lancaster back onto its wheels. Right, just on stickies, Jack. You lower your jack out of the way. Okay, Brad. Lower it down. Yeah, clear. Clear. Thank you. Well, keep these adapters in the jack. Yeah. Yeah. This is former 35. Dave's about completed the drilling. It'll be stripped off, painted, and then we'll start riveting half sections together. Former 35. This hole is around one inch diameter. This is where the front spar of the tailplane fits to former 35. And one on the other side as well. There's not much room when you see it like this. It looks big in there. Yeah. But when you look at the floor level and your yeah, head level. Yeah, there ain't much, is there, no. No. You have to climb over it. Yeah. So now we've got it all drilled. Yeah. Take yeah. it apart, deburr it, clean it up, yeah. swing it to mark and get yeah. some paint on it. And will you put it back like this before you start any riveting? Or will you just do I'm, it in a half section? I'm not, well, the, the outside angle's definitely got to come off. Yeah. Um, so once I pop that off, and then I might try and see if I can fit it with the rest of it in, because then if I can, I can rivet all this on the bench. Which yeah. Which make life a lot easier. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And then just do the outside bits when it's in situ. Yeah. But we'll see. I'll, I'll see if we can, see if yeah. we can get it in. We'll see.
Did these supports do the job then, John? Yeah. Unless you swing on it, it's not going to move. Last look in the nose section before the gun turret is fitted. Oh right, yeah, we'll do that then. Okay. Thank you. Aid and Andy deliver the gun turret.